And let us sing praises and make melody in our hearts unto the Lord. A song leader for this morning's worship is Brother Stephen Hart. Thank you. Someone left a light song, a black Chevrolet license plate, 843 to TTS. Thank you. He sweeter I know. Oh, he sweeter I know. Where the stars the light may rise, and the strong wind may blow, but I, I tell. Let it rise. 
Church of Christ. We want to welcome you to our morning worship service. If you're a visitor with us, we want to let you know that you're our honored guest. And if you have any questions about anything that's being taught today, please see the minister. He will be standing to the side after the morning worship service. If you are visiting us through live stream, we want to give you uh, thanks for taking time out of your day to uh, visit and and watch us on live stream. We are inviting you personally to come out and visit us that we may know who you are, that we may love on you, and that we may get to know you better. Amen. My name is Greg Reed. I have the announcements for this morning. I have a couple of special dates that uh, I need to give to you. Um, today, today, after morning worship service, we're going to have our Black History Month program. It's going to go like this. After the worship service, we're going to go to lunch at 11.45. And after that, at 12.30, the Black History program will begin. February the 22nd is coming up. The Church of Christ and Russell Road are having a men's day. There will be a van that is going, that is in Sweetport, Louisiana. If you have, are you looking to go, or you have any questions about it, please see Lord Harris. March the 8th is the <coughs> Arkansas Church of Christ Joint Worship, Central Arkansas Church of Christ Joint Worship Service. That will be at Central Church of Christ at 5 p.m. <coughs> We have a AARP driver's class, which will be March the 9th, 2020. It will be here at the building. If you need any information or have any questions, please see George Jones. There is a certificate that is covered for three years. I do believe that it will help you with your insurance. And we, you know we love to save money. Also, any Bible school teachers that are seeking or planning to go to the National Teacher Workshop, it is April the 16th to 18th. I know that you heard about it, but I want to remind you again, please sign up in the foyer. You want to get those names so we can have proper transportation for those that want to go. Please remember those that are on the prayer list that are sick shut in, those that have lost family members, those that have lost friends. Also, I have a card that says to thank you for your kindness and sympathy at the time when it was deeply appreciated. Thank you so much for the beautiful floor arrangements. I appreciate your thoughtfulness. God bless you from Patricia Owens. Let us pray. And one more announcement. For those that are uh, filing taxes, your tax information is prepared and it is ready. Please see Jewel, uh, Jewel Durrell, Sister Durrell, for your information. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Just thank you for this time. Thank you for this opportunity allowing us to come together. Lord, as we come together this morning seeking to worship you, Father, we just ask that the things that are on our hearts and minds, Father, that are um, that may be a distraction, Father, that we just pray that you will move those things that our hearts and minds may be upon you. Lord, yeah. we just pray that the things that are taught, Father, that we may apply them to our lives, that may bring glory and praise unto your name, Father, that we may walk upright and be a pleasing to you. We thank you for all the blessings that you have given us, especially at this congregation at Mac Avenue. Father, we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, this is uh, the Lord's Day, and it's also uh, Black History Month. And the leadership here has um, chose the day as the day that we will uh, count on look back at black history. So um, I was asked to do some songs 
And uh, in doing my research, uh, most of the songs that I, that I found, probably 99.9%, uh, they were spiritual, spiritual songs, worship songs. Uh, they sung them uh, doing worship. The uh, majority of them were songs that gave, uh, they told stories, they gave signals, they gave information, and warnings. So um, one of the ones I found, um, I seen it, but it wasn't one of my favorites until I read what I read about the song. And uh, once I read about the song, then I had a, it had a new meaning to me spiritually. And I'm going to read this to you. Um, the song is, Were You There? Mm -hmm. And in this song, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a spiritual that recounts the crucial <coughs> fiction of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And to the people, the brutal treatment of their own who were beaten and whipped during slavery. The singer asked, Were You There? When the mighty tortured the meat, surely witnesses trembled in anguish as the whip lacerated the backs of the enslaved. Their sorrow and pain, as deep as that of Jesus, disciples and families who mourned as his head hung and he died. So that's that's the explanation of this song. So just think about those things as, as we're singing this. Were you there? <clears throat> were you there? When they crucified my Lord, were you there? When they crucified my Lord, oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble. tremble. 
a pro-union, anti-slave anthem, basically. And it basically is uh, glorifying God for being there after everything that they have been through. So we're going to sing that <clears throat> Battle of the Publish. And it starts off, uh, my eyes have seen the glory of but I'm going to sing it off. I'm going to start off low. So, so everybody know where I'm at. <clears throat>
in quiet lives and all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Yes. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at, this has now been witnessed to at the proper time. May God have a blessing for readers, hearers, and do of his word. Let we all stand for the word of prayer. Let us pray. To the Almighty, the all powerful God of heaven, <coughs> Father, we come this morning as humble as we know how, thanking you, Father, for all that you've done for us, from our early existence all the way to this present time. Yes. Thank you, Father, that you've allowed us to assemble here this day to worship you in spirit and in truth. Yes. Father, as we come this morning, we realize we come with a lot of concerns, disappointments, fears. We pray, Father, that we might have the courage to leave them at your feet this morning. Yes. Father, we pray that we might give you our very best as we come this morning. Thanking you, Father, for all the things that you have done for us, provided the clothes on our backs, the homes that we live in, the food that we eat, Father. Pray, Father, we may not take these things lightly, realizing that there is much starvation throughout the world. Father, we pray that as Christians we might allow the light of Christ in us to shine so that the world might see you as you live and dwell inside of us and give you glory and honor. Yes. Father, we come praying for Brother Harris this morning as he continues to stand boldly and very humble, teaching your word, Father, throughout this brotherhood and throughout the world. Yes. Pray that you might continue to bless him, crown his head with wisdom and knowledge, and humility that he might continue to boldly bring your word to the lost world. Father, we pray for his family. Thank you for his wife who stands by his side. We pray that as a congregation we might support the work that's being done here. Thank you for the eldership of this congregation. Thank you for the deacons, the wives, the things that they do sometimes, Father, that we don't really see, but we see the results of what they do. Father, we thank you so much for giving us the things that you do give us. Thank you for your divine counsel that you help us, Father, as we make decisions about our lives as we talk to you and we counsel with you. We pray, Father, that we may be attentive this morning in the message as Brother Harris will come to us shortly. We come now asking you, Father, for forgiveness of the things that we have said on a talk that was not right in your holy and righteous sight. Yes. We come, Father, asking you to be with the foster family and the loss of, of Chuck's son. We pray, Father, that we might wrap our arms around this family and encourage them, help them to know that you are always near. Yes. Father, we thank you for those who here this morning, they are uh, not feeling well, but you, you yes. decided to come. You thank you, Father, for their courage, for their strength. Help us, Father, to trust you more and take you at your word. Father, we thank you for all these things. We pray for the men and women that are serving abroad in the military throughout this world. Pray for our world leaders, Father, that you might touch them in a way that our lives may be more tolerable upon this earth. Thank you so much for all that you do, Father. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus Christ the life that he lived, the death he died, that through his resurrection one day we might see your face in peace. Yes. Father, and this will be enough. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. 
<laughs> I can feel him looking at the back of my head. <laughs> Before Brother Harris <clears throat> come with his message this morning, we're going to see everybody will be happy. Yes, sir. Everybody will be happy. Let us see. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond where the sailors are soon a glory shed. Yeah. Oh, where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore. And everybody will be happy over there. Yeah, we'll sing it. Everybody will.
intercessions and thanksgiving. Yes, sir. Be made for certain people. For all people. Mm -hmm. For kings and all who are in high positions. That we may lead a peaceful and quiet life. Mm -hmm. Godly and dignified in every way. <coughs> This is good and it's pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, mm -hmm. who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, uh -huh. the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. I submit to you that salvation for the black man is salvation for all men. Amen. Amen. In fact, there are a lot of ways you can say that. Right. Justice for the black man. Yes, sir. Is justice for all men. Amen. It ought to be that don't care what man you're talking about. That's right. Whether you're talking about the black man, the white man, the red man, the yellow man. Justice ought to be justice, regardless who the man is. Righteousness is certainly righteousness, yes, sir. without regard to who the man is. Yes. And salvation is indeed salvation, regardless to who the man is. And therefore, in this text, the premise of this text is universal will of God for salvation for all men. Yes, sir. Paul is not writing this letter to a defeat to, to a, 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 a Jewish congregation. This letter actually is written to a Gentile congregation. It is actually written to a congregation of people who have been converted down at Ephesus. You remember Ephesus? Yes, sir. That city that had all of those goddesses. Mm -hmm. Paul came to that, Acts chapter 19. Certain men had been baptized by Apollos, and he came back and challenged that conversion on the grounds of the understanding of the truth. Yes, sir. And when he corrected their understanding, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And immediately when Paul laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit of God, uh, there were some other vagabond Jews yeah. who thought that they would do what Paul did using Paul as their inscription. He said, we are Judy by Christ who Paul preaches. Yeah. Yeah. The problem wasn't in Christ. Come on, the problem wasn't in Paul. Uh -huh. The problem was in them. Yeah. Because they did not have faith in Christ. That's right. And they did not obey the teachings of Paul. Uh -huh. They just wanted to cash in on the benefits without having accepted the conditions of the salvation. Many people are like that today. That's right. They want God to save them without cashing in on the responsibilities of salvation. Help us. They just want to sit around and God save them because they're good people. Help us. They want to just come to church and God save them because they showed up. Mercy. Not interested in really believing, not interested in really obeying the gospel, and not really thinking about the individual responsibility of every man. Every man has a responsibility before God to surrender his heart and life in obedience to God. And so the text says that God wants two things for Christians. Now what are those two things? Number one, God wants Christians to pray for all people. Yes, sir. Why? He wants Christians to pray for all people. I'll say that twice. Uh -huh. uh, for those of us who think we only pray for the good folk. Help us. We only pray for kin folk. We only pray for members of the church. But everybody needs a Christian praying for him. That's right. Everybody needs a child of God who have an avenue to the throne. Uh, talking to heaven about him and the things he faced in life. Mm -hmm. And secondly, God wants us to live a quiet and peaceful life. And so our prayers are in direction of God's blessing on all people. Mm -hmm. And the life we live in spite of the circumstances 
in which we live our life. Mm -hmm. Now, the question remains why? Got two reasons. Number one is that he wants all men to be saved. Yes, sir. How? God wants all men to be saved. Now, I, I, I want us to grab a hold to that because we often think that only certain people can be saved. Yep, right. That's a religion that teaches that only certain folk can be saved. That's right. And it, it's not that black Hebrew Israelites either. That's right. right. It's a religion that you've been knowing for years and years. Mm -hmm. And they've been teaching that for years and years. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, they are so committed to it uh, that they limit the number of people yeah. that are going to be saved. Uh -huh. Because God isn't interested in the salvation of all people. Mercy. And then there are mainland religions who in that erroneous view of the divine plan of God through a process called divine election and selection insist that God isn't interested in saving everybody. Mercy. But that God has somehow predetermined uh -huh. who he's going to be saved. And nobody can get in on it. They can't believe to get in on it. They can't obey to get in on it because the number is closed. Two different groups with two different theologies but end up with the same conclusion yeah. that salvation is limited and only certain people can get in on it. Uh -huh. There are groups that have a doctrine called limited atonement that he didn't die for you. He died for certain people. His blood wasn't shed for everybody. God wouldn't waste his blood on some folk. Mercy. But I'm here to tell you he didn't waste his blood in the first place. All right. And he sure didn't waste it on me. All right. His blood was shed for all men to be saved. So he wants us to be saved and he wants all men to come into the knowledge of the truth. And how is he going to do that? Here's the meaning. That is one God who wants and has provided for the salvation of all men. Uh -huh. One God. You don't have a lot of objects and in order to turn to and a lot of sources of salvation. Only one. Number two, there is one mediator who came to connect all men to God. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jesus came through the Jews into the world, but he did not come just to connect Jews to the Lord. That's right. See, that was the Jews' biggest problem with Christ. <coughs> is he was too broad in his, in, 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 in his, in his uh, attentions. Mm -hmm. He was interested in too many different people. He was interested in people that were downcast. Yeah. He was in people, interested in people that were not Jews. He was in, interested in people that had committed great sins. Yeah. He was interested in too many people. The Jews had a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Simon had a problem with that. Yeah. A lot of the Jews, Pharisees had a problem with that. The Sadducees had a problem with that. The self-righteous individuals of his day had a problem with the fact that Jesus Christ is the mediator who came to connect all men to the Father. Mm -hmm. yes, so the disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself and where I am. Mm -hmm. That you may be also whether I go if you know mm -hmm. and the way you know. Not just his disciples, but that way was being prepared for everybody. Yes, sir. Christ is the only ransom for all men who was given as our sacrifice for sin. Mm -hmm. The text reminds us that he is the sacrifice. Now, the sacrifice is determined by the person who made the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to assure you, you didn't make this sacrifice. Right? That's right. We did not offer Christ up as a sacrifice for our sins. Mm -hmm. In the ancient days of Jewish history, when the Jews came to the Day of Atonement, they offered up a ram upon the altar for their sacrifice. They had two things. They had the sacrifice itself, and they had the scapegoat to take the sins away, mm -hmm. which was offered in their behalf. And this was offered in the behalf of the sins of the people. Yeah. But during the year, each one of them brought their own sacrifice and offered it up. And it was offered by not them, but the priest 
yes, sir. who was designated to make the offering. That's right. And he offered in behalf of their sins, which rolled their sins forward for a year. Uh-huh. You and I did not offer Christ on the cross. That's right. Now, we, we are responsible for him being on the cross. Mm -hmm. Our sins put him there. Yeah. Our refusal to honor God put him there. But it was the Father who offered his Son as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. Yes, because if I offered him, I would only offer him for my sins. Mercy. Yeah. I would only offer him to take care of me. The Jew who offered his sins, his, his offerings on the seven days and on the days of, of sacrificing on the blue moons and, and on, the, on the day of atonement, when he brought his offering, he brought it for him and his family. He didn't break it for everybody. Right. He brought his for his. But when God does it, God does it for everybody. Yes, sir. You might as well tell the truth. Uh -huh. You probably would just offer for yourself too. Mercy. You'd be concerned about yourself. <laughs> that because of me, myself, my family, nobody else. <laughs> but Christ was offered for all men. Yes, sir. And he was given as a sacrifice. And the text shows that the object of the mediator and the object of the offering is that all men would be saved. Now, see, some people interpret all men to mean all Jews. Some might interpret that to mean all Asians. Some might interpret that to mean all black men. But this wasn't just black men he was writing to. That's right. It wasn't just Jews he's writing to. Right. It wasn't just Asians he's writing to. Mm -hmm. It was men. That's right. And the effort was that men, and actually, the Jew already had access. And these to whom he's writing did not have access before. Mm -hmm. And so there are many false claims out there today about how the black man is going to be saved. There are people who teach that salvation for the black man depends on a certain group of people. The Islams came up, and this is the black Islam element, mm -hmm. came up fighting for the black man, bringing deliverance to the black man, mm -hmm. preaching a message of hope for the black man. And it's all right to give hope to the black man. But when you start talking about salvation, salvation don't have a color. That's right. You hear what I said? That's right. See, it wasn't red, it, it wasn't black blood that came down that cross when Jesus died. It wasn't white blood that came down that cross when Jesus died. Right. It wasn't yellow blood that came down that cross. It was the same color blood all of us shed. That's right. The blood for all humanity. Yes, sir. It's stamped by God. Yes. Had made of one blood mm -hmm. all nations of people for to dwell on all the face of the earth. That's right. That determined the time before point and the bound of their habitation. It was the blood of the crucified Savior that was shed for all men. And so our salvation is not found in people who target only certain groups that nobody else can get in on. <laughs> Hebrew Israelites might claim they have the salvation for the black man. But I'm here to tell you, if you are a religion that only concerned about one group of people being saved, it didn't come from God. That's right. From the day that God put man up on this earth, uh -huh. God had a universal interest in man. Yes, sir. He tells them to replenish and multiply and fill the earth. Yes, sir. God was interested in the whole world mm -hmm. coming under his ring. When Moses, uh, when, when Noah comes out of that ark, mm -hmm. after the flood is receded, God tells them to do the same thing he told Adam and Eve to do. Yes, sir. And they were to feel it, but this time, he got three families to do the job. Mm -hmm. God started out with one family. He got one family with three sons. Mm -hmm. And that job is to fill the earth. And they want to begin to multiply and cause men to come to know God. Some think that Africa is the place you got to go. Because salvation was born in the African continent. 
I need you to understand something. It wasn't intended to stay in any continent. Right. That's right. It was intended to go to the world. Go ye therefore into all the world Amen. and preach the gospel to every creature. Yes, sir. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Christianity is the salvation for all men. Black, blue, gray, bristle, and bone. <laughs> if you're going to be saved, Jesus is your Savior. Yes, sir. There are always groups offering salvation in other ways and by other means. But just remember that none of them created us. That's right. None of them have sustained us. And none of them are going to judge us in the last day. I want to be saved by the one who created me, who sustained me, and who's going to judge me in the last day. I won't be judged by any certain racial group. I'll be judged by heaven itself. Yeah. I'll be judged by the one who gave his blood on the cross for me. Uh -huh. I'll be judged by the one that loved me and gave himself for me. Uh -huh. so who does God plan affect? Galatians chapter 3. Verse 14, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Did you notice that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles? Mm -hmm. Abraham was the father of the Jews. But the blessings of Abraham was to come on the Gentiles. Yes, sir. The message is that salvation was intended for all people and not just one group. That's right. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 11, Paul says, Wherefore well, remember that in time past you were Gentiles of the flesh, uh -huh. called uncircumcision, mm -hmm. that which is called the circumcision of the flesh made by him, uh -huh. that at that time without Christ, alien from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, mm -hmm. having no hope. And without God in the world. Uh -huh. But now in Christ Jesus, yeah. you sometime were a father, are made not by the blood of Christ. Now notice, when he says those that were far off, he's not just talking about distance here. That's right. He's talking about relationship here. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. talking about the Gentiles who did not have the relationship that the Jews had Come with on, him. God. And so he tells them that he is our peace. Uh -huh. We have made both one and broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Uh -huh. Having abolished in the flesh the enmity, uh -huh. even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself a twain one new man. Yes, he said God is bringing men together in Christ. Yes, yes sir. sir. I need you to know today if you don't want to be together, you're not going to be saved by Christ. Help us. I want to be with If you don't want to be together in Christ, then you don't want to be saved by Christ. Mm -hmm. He is bringing men together in Christ. <laughs> now, Isaiah 56, 5, Isaiah 62, 1 and 2, Isaiah 65, 15 is a prophecy of the new name that's going to be given. Even to them within my house, within my wall, I give a name better than a son's and daughter's, everlasting name that will not be cut off. The Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings of glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Notice that in this prophecy, God brings the Gentiles in along with the Jews. Yes, sir. Now, there were two basic distinctions of men back in that time. That was the Jew. And that was the Gentile. The Gentile were the people of the world. The Jew were the people of God. But here God is bringing them all together. The nations who were not Jews were considered Gentiles. And therefore God brings us in. What does God do with Gentiles? He eradicates it. Did you hear what I said? All right. God removes the stigma of Gentile when Jesus comes and dies for man on the cross. His blood cleanses that, and all men have a privilege of being children of God, Christians, sons, and daughters of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Can a black yes, man be the son of God? Yes, he can. All right. Can a white man be the son of God? Yes, he can. Can an Indian? Yes, he can. Uh -huh. Can a Caucasian? Yes, he can. 
Can an angel? Yes, he can. Whatever he is. And in ethnicity, he can be a son of God. Yeah. And when he obeys the gospel of Jesus Christ, he is a son of God. Yes, and God doesn't have one gospel for one group and another gospel for a different group. He has the same gospel for all men. And if we obey that gospel, we'll have the promises that come with it. See, those scriptures speak of the people, Jews and Gentiles, being one in Christ. And the final outcome is that the Lord makes them one. They don't make it themselves. The Lord makes them one. And when you're trying to build unity with your own building blocks, you're going to always, they always tumble. Because your blocks are not steady enough to stay in place to build unity. God builds the unity through the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our job is to stay in the unity that God is building. When I came up out of the water of grave of baptism, I was a Christian. I was the same thing any other group became when he came up out of the water of grave of baptism if he obeyed the gospel of Christ. He became the same thing I became. And if we didn't become the same thing, somebody didn't go in right. That's right. You heard me right? All right. If you go in right, you're going to come out right. God don't have no botched operations. You hear what I say? He didn't have any botched operations. Salvation is an operation of God. Yes, sir. Bear with him and not just wearing your rhythm through the faith of the operation of God who has raised them from the dead. Yes, God doesn't botch operation. All right. You know, may the gospel of Jesus Christ, God saved you. That's right. And God adds you to the family of the righteous. Mm -hmm. and he doesn't botch that. The botching comes with me. Yeah. When they fail to do what God has called them to do. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 4. John said, I heard the number of them that were sealed. And that was sealed in 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And John is looking at this great number and all of those Jews. In that great number, out of, out of all the tribes, 12,000. 12,000 of Reuben, 12,000 of Gad, 12,000 of Napoli, all the way down the line, 144,000. Mm -hmm. And we quit that. Now the whole religion built around that 144,000. And they quit reading. Why do you quit reading before you get to the end of the chapter? Come on, Doc. Read the rest of the chapter. Yes, sir. See what comes after that. Uh huh. Start reading before you get to that verse and keep on reading till you get through. Uh -huh. And then you'll see it. What God said. Then he said, I looked and I saw another number yes, that no man can number. Every nation and kindred and people and tongue stood before the throne of God, before yes, the Lamb, clothed in white robes, yes, palms in their hands. That's the number I'm in. Yes, I ain't in the 144,000. Right. That number too small for me. Yes, I'm in a number that don't limit anybody. Right. Everybody can get in on that number. Yes, yeah. I'm in that number, ladies and gentlemen. Uh -huh. You can be in it too. Yes, sir. Oh, you can be in that number. You can't be in it if you don't obey the gospel. All right. You can't be in it if you're not saved. Mm -hmm. You can't be in it if you're not in Christ's church, but you can be in that number. You can be saved by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what color you are. Salvation for the black man yes. is salvation for all men. Yes, sir. When God saves me, he saves everybody. Yes. Romans chapter 3 and verse number 1. See, people have this idea that the, all the Jews are the black folk. So what advantage then does that give them? That's my question. Right. When you say the Jews are the black folk, Come on, Doc. what advantage does that give them? Paul raised the same question. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 1, what advantage then have the Jew? Right. Or what profit is there of circumcision? All right. But notice in that same chapter, he comes back in verse 5 and says, If our unrighteousness commend the unrighteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous and take vengeance? I speak as a man, God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world if he's unrighteous, if he's jealous, if he is a prejudice, if he has respect of person? How is he righteous? All right. 
But then, are we better than they he raises? I'm a Jew. It's speaking of Paul, I'm a Jew. I have a relationship with God, and I'm better than the Gentiles. I'm better than the other races of people. Uh -huh. Is God put me above them? Mm -hmm. No, in no wise, he said. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles, and they are all under sin. You were a sinner. I was a sinner. And every man before he came to Christ, don't care what his color is, was a sinner. That's right. Our color didn't make us righteous. Mm -hmm. Our grandpapas and mamas didn't make us righteous. Right. God is the one that makes us righteous. Come on, Doug. When we obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. When we are let him bring us into the family of God. And then Paul just keeps on adding to his question. He says in verse 29 of the third chapter, Romans, is he the God of the Jews only? Come on, Doc. Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes. He said, yes, of the Gentiles also. Yes. Sin, it is one God mm -hmm. who shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes sir. I said there a few days ago on the internet, found this group of people that were preaching this, you know, one race kind of religion. Mm -hmm. And I listened to them recite scriptures. <laughs> Noted the scriptures they recite. Not a single one of these scriptures are in the list. Uh -huh. Not a single one of them. They recited scriptures that doesn't talk about universal salvation. That's right. They recited scriptures that don't even really talk about that's, salvation. That's right. right. That's right. They cherry pick the scriptures mm -hmm. to talk about their own special interests. Yes, sir. I can't just preach what I like. Come on, Doc. Come on, Doc. I have to preach what's in the book. That's right. <laughs> And sometimes this slaps me before I even get a chance to fill a double slap on you. Yes, sir. Right. Right. Yes, sir. I'm about to step to the side yes, and recover. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. It's for all men. Mm -hmm. It's not the color of our skin we ought to be so worried about. It's the context of our heart mm -hmm. and the quality of our blood right. that we ought to be worried about. I'm talking about the sacrificial blood. Yes, sir. Acts 17, remember, had made of one blood mm -hmm. all nations of people mm -hmm. to dwell on all the face of the earth. Do you know before 1947, I, I studied this, uh, and you know, the, even the doctors and things, they, they had this hesitation when somebody was sick and trying to give them uh, blood transfusions and, and stuff. And, if a, if a white man was sick and needed blood and there was a black man there with, with blood to give, they wouldn't take it. They wouldn't take it. They thought that blood was, you know, that, that, that blood won't work in a white man. But after 1947, when the medical science discovered that all blood is the same. It has genuine same qualities and they could differentiate the, the, the usefulness of a person's blood by what is called the blood type. Yeah, yeah. And so they typed it A, B, uh, A, or B, or A, B, or O. And they could identify whether or not I can use this blood, don't care what the color of the person is that gave the blood, as to whether he has O, B, A, B, or A. And if he has the right type, I can put that blood in somebody else. And it won't change its color. <laughs> <laughs> that was one blood. Yes, sir. That will change my color. Uh -huh. It will change me from a person black with sin Come on, to a person cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, His blood Amen. will change the context of my character. Mm -hmm. It will change who I am. And who I belong to. Right. My blood going into another person. What they have to be more concerned about is whether they have a tight match. Right. And then they're going to test you for all kinds of foreign agents in your blood. Yes, you know, sir. Like these things that we've hidden for so many years. Help us. Uh, you know, if it's still in there, <laughs> uh, they're going to they're sweep it for that. Yes, sir. 
You might see them take that blood and put on the shelf that and walk a thing on it and put a note that I can't use. That's right. Not because all blood ain't the same. Not because it didn't match. Because it's contaminated. contaminated. Right. Yeah. See, the blood of Christ is contaminated. Come on, Doc. The blood of Christ is good stuff. Yes, sir. He had no sin. All right. There was no hanging painting in his life. Yes, sir. There was no treachery in his life. All right. He was perfect in life. Yeah. He was perfect in death. Mm -hmm. He was perfect in resurrection. Yeah. And now he's waiting to bring us to a perfect home beyond his relatives. Yes. Amen. How many all that lay mm -hmm. and they have a lay? And I'll give you rest. Take my look upon your learner. I'm going to get low and hard. And you should find rest under your soul. Uh -huh. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Is light. Mm -hmm. Now the chapter 2 says, Have we not all one Father? And has not one God created us? Why then are we faithless to one another, mm -hmm. profaning the covenant of our Father? I tell you today, nobody but a black man helped our Lord carry the cross. Simon of Serene. Yes, sir. I tell you, a black man brought Christianity to Africa uh -huh. in Acts chapter 8. Mm -hmm. Philip preached the gospel unto the eunuch. He raised the question, what hinders me from being baptized? Mm -hmm. Philip said, and I believe with all thy heart thy me. They commanded the chariot to stand still. He went down to the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Mm -hmm. Spirit of the Lord called away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way with Joseph. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Arabians, known to be black, were some of the first to become Christian. Acts chapter 2, mm -hmm. and verse 1 through 5. Mm -hmm. Part of me and Elamites, who brothers that left the tainer, and Jews, Cappadocia, part of the Asian of Amphalphilia, strange and wrong Jews, uh, Greeks, and Arabians heard them speak in their own language, the wonderful works of God. Yes, sir. Out of that crowd of mixed people from all races of the world, 3,000 souls obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. Acts chapter 8, they were everywhere yes. preaching the word. Acts chapter 11, those that scattered from Jerusalem on the persecution of Christians by Saul uh -huh. went all over the place, and many of them came down as far as Antioch. And many of the people began to believe that uh, Barnabas came down and found such a heart. Yeah. He went and sought for Saul, and Saul came down. Uh -huh. Now they spent a year teaching much people, and many people obeyed the gospel. And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Yes, sir. It was not until people from other languages, from other religions, uh, came to Christ, from other ethnic backgrounds that came to Christ from other cultures that came to Christ. It wasn't until they came that we came to known as Christians. Uh, yeah. And that meant that we're all part of the same family. Mm -hmm. And since we're part of the same family, then we have the same home to look forward to. And when I'm done working down here, yeah. out in the sunshine and yeah. out in the rain, yes, I'm going home yeah. to live yeah. with Jesus. Yes, and it'll be grand. Yes, sir. And when I'm done, Suffering down here, uh -huh. out in the sunshine, yeah. out in the rain. Uh -huh. I'm going home yeah. to live with Jesus, yes, and it will be great. Yeah. Jesus has come to all that labor, and together they, and I will give you rest. Yes, Take my yoke upon you, learn up, for me and low and hard, and you shall find rest to your soul. Yeah. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Come to it by hearing this word. Believe with all your heart, repent of your sin. Confess before men Jesus Christ as the Son of the living God, and then be buried with him in the water grave of baptism for remission of your sins. Rise from the grave of a new creature. Add to the only church you can read about in the Bible. The church of Christ salute you. Live a faithful life on the death. After a while, and by and by, go home to live with God in the city of bliss, beyond the ability of why not say yes to Jesus. Why not come to Christ today? Why not cast off the shackles of sin and worldliness and the limitations of bad thinking and ungodly teaching and surrender to Jesus Christ today and walk home to be a child of God, yes. an heir of God, and a joint out with Jesus Christ? Why not say yes right now while we stand and sing? The Savior says, come.